Welcome to another episode of Quick Tech Tips and Reviews. My name is Tony, and with this channel, I bring you guys a variety of tech-related content. Now, if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe and make sure you hit that little bell down below so that you're alerted to when I release new content. In today's video, we're going to set up a Plex Media Server on a Synology NAS. All right, guys. So the first question is, what is Plex? According to Wikipedia, Plex is a client server media player system and software suite comprising of two main components. The Plex Media Server desktop application runs on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux compatibles, including some types of NAS devices. And today you'll see it installed on a Synology NAS. The server desktop application organizes video content, audio, and photos from a user's collections and from online services, enabling the players to access and stream the contents. There are also official clients available for mobile devices, smart TVs, and streaming boxes, a web app, and Plex Home Theater no longer maintained, as well as many third party alternatives. Simply put, Plex is a software that stores all of your media content in one central location, the server, and runs on a multitude of platforms. Your content can be viewed on a variety of devices, the clients, such as smartphones, tablets, smart TVs, streaming media devices like Roku and Apple TV, etc., as well as in a web browser. Let's take a look at the installation process. Okay, I'm at the Plex website, and by the way, that's plex.tv. I'll put the link to that down in the video description below. The first thing you need to do when you get to the Plex website is create your free account. So come down here where it says sign up, get a free Plex account. Once you have that free account set up, the next thing you need to do is download your software. So we're going to come over to get started on your device. And we have two choices. It defaults to apps and devices, but we want the server software. So we're going to click on Plex Media Server. And from the drop down window, you can see all the different platforms that Plex will run on. For our installation today, we're going to choose Synology. And then over on the right side, we have to choose a package. So if we click on choose package, you'll see the different packages available for the different processors. For our case today, since we're running uh, DSM 6.0 and newer, we're going to select Intel 64 bit. Now for time's sake, I already downloaded this. Just make sure in this screen here, you select the proper installer for your situation. Now that the installer has been downloaded, let's jump over to the NAS. We're here in the Synology NAS and I'm going to click on the package center. Now, I could have installed the, the Plex Media Server from the Package Center. However, I know for a fact that it's not the latest version. That's why I just suggest that you go right to Plex's website and download the latest version of the Plex Media Server directly from Plex. Once the file is downloaded, you see here we have the option to do a manual install. So let's click Manual Install. And now we're going to browse for the file that was downloaded. So it's in my downloads folder and it's this file here, Plex Media Server, and it's ending in the suffix .spk. So let's say open. And now that it's loaded the installer, we're going to say next. And now we get the message. This package is published by an unknown publisher. Are you sure you want to continue? And it's okay to say next. The only reason we're getting this message is because we didn't directly install Plex from the Synology Package Center. Instead, we downloaded it directly from the Plex website. So let's go ahead and say yes. And now we're just going to confirm the settings. I'm going to leave run after installation checked, and I'm going to say apply. And now the Plex Media Server is being installed. We'll come right back as soon as the installation is completed. Okay, guys, the Plex Media Server installation was successful. You can see here in the package center, it's got a status of installed. And if we click on it, you can see that it is running. So that's a good thing. Next, let me open up the control panel because I want to show you a couple of things that took place during the installation process. First off, the installation created a Plex user, as you see here, and that is required for the Plex Media Server to function. It also created a shared folder called Plex. So what do we have to do now is we have to give ourselves access to 
that Plex shared folder. So I'm going to click on select the Plex folder and click on edit. And we'll come over to permissions. And I'm going to give whatever users I want on this screen access to that folder. So for now, I'm just going to give myself read write access and I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. That's a very important step. Do not omit that step in the process. Now that we've taken care of that, it's time to create our data folders where we're going to store our actual movies and music files for the Plex server. So let's click on the file station. And you can see here's the Plex folder, the shared folder that was created. So what we're going to do is select that and we're going to come over here and I'm going to just right click and create a folder and I'm going to call this movies and say, okay. And I'm going to repeat that process by right clicking and creating a music folder. I'm going to call it my music and I'm going to go ahead and say, okay. Now I can go ahead and create a, uh, a pictures or a photos folder at this point, but I'm not going to do that for the purpose of this video. You'll get the idea of the process just by using these two folders here. Now that we have our data folders selected, we can go ahead and launch the actual Plex media server app. So we're going to come up to the main menu and we're going to click on Plex media server. And it found the home NAS uh, pretty quickly, actually. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is add a couple of libraries. But before that, no, actually, let's go ahead with the libraries at this point. So I'm going to come over and I'm going to say add library. And I'm going to select movies. Now, I'm going to leave it named movies. But the next step is to actually point the movie library, the Plex movie library to the movie data folder that we created in the file station. So I'm going to click on browse for media folder. And we're going to come over here to volume one. Now you might think obvious thing would be to click on Plex, but that's the Plex home folder. We actually want the data folders. So it was created, they were created on volume one. And if you scroll down here, you'll see the Plex data folders. And then inside you'll see the two folders right here that I created movies and my music. So we'll select movies and you can see the path volume one forward slash Plex forward slash movies. That'll be my data folder for the movies. And we're going to click add. And now I'm going to add another library. For music. I'm going to call it my music since I named my other folder my music. We're going to say next. I'm going to browse for that music media folder. And again, it's on volume one. It's in the Plex folder. And here it is, my music. And I'm going to go ahead and say add. And now I'm going to say next. And here it's just asking if we want to create a premium Plex music library. I just want to create a basic library for my music. So I'm going to click on next. And you have some options you can set here. I'm going to go ahead and leave the default and say add library. And now if you look on the left hand side of my screen here, you can see I have my movies library and my music library. And both of these libraries have been now pointed or mapped to the music and my my music and movies data folders that we created earlier. What I want to do next is <clears throat> come up over here to the little settings icon and I want to come over to library on the left hand pane and I'm going to actually select scan my library automatically and what this will do is the library will be automatically updated when changes are made. So when you upload media files to the actual data folders, it will automatically, Plex will automatically scan and find that new uh, content. So I'm going to select that and say save changes. Okay, and then one more thing I want to do um, under transcoder, show advanced. And I guess I don't have that option because I was going to enable transcoding, but I guess because I don't have the Plex Premium Pass, it's, it's not an option for me here. So 
that's fine. But if you do have the Plex, Plex Premium Pass, you want to come into this section here in the settings transcoder and enable the transcoder. Um, it's not enabled by default. So if you want to be able to watch movies remotely from outside your home and you want them to be transcoded uh, properly so that they could be viewed on your mobile device, you need to set this preference. Okay, so let's go back. And since we have set up our libraries, the next step is to add some content to those libraries. So I will do that next. So we're going to come over to the Synology NAS. Now there are a couple ways we can do this. I'm just going to drag and drop some media in directly into the file station. You can do this through um, mapping a drive on Windows. You can map a drive to the data folders. You could also um, do the same thing on the uh, on the Mac OS as well. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to show you dragging folders directly into the file station. So we're going to come over to our Plex folder and I'm going to open the movies folder. So let me slide this over here. I just happen to have some content right here. I have one movie, actually two movies. I have an AVI file which I'm just going to drag and drop right over into the movies folder. And I'm just going to say overwrite. That was just asking me if the file already exists. What do I want to do? So it is adding the file. Now that's a rather large movie file. So it's going to take some time. I'm also going to bring over a smaller MP4 file. And again, I'm just going to tell it to overwrite. That's fine. And while those are still uploading, I'm going to switch over to my, you can see, oh, there we go. There's the bless the child. And I'm going to come over to my music. And then you can see there's nothing in my music and I'm just going to upload a folder. And I have a couple of songs in there, MP3 files. And it's just folders called favorites from the fifties. And while those are uploading, Let's go over back over to the Plex interface and let's click on movies. And you can see both movies are now available for viewing. One glitch that I found with Plex so far and I haven't come up with a solution yet is when you go into this setting here and you tell the library to scan library automatically um, that seems to only work for the actual movies library as you can see nothing is showing up in the um, music library so i'm going to just tell it to manually scan that library and it should find the content now if i search by folder there's the folder favorites from the favorite from the 50s and if I double click you'll see a bunch of the mp3 files listed there so again that's a little bit of a glitch with the automatic scan of the libraries I don't know why it's not working um, for the my music folder so that's it guys the Plex media server successfully installed on a Synology NAS if you like the video please give it a thumbs up be sure to check out some of my other videos up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share. And use those Amazon affiliate links. It doesn't change your price, but it does help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. I thank you for watching. See you next time.